I've only had to use violence for necessary defense. And I've certainly never used it to take a life. Cap. Because we've already covered how he was just whooping firebenders like disobedient teenage kids African style out there at the North Pole. Today we are back again trying to cancel him for the massacre he commits just a few days after the Holocaust at the North Pole. I will finally be using my college education for something and be counting how many people my boy stumped and ran over because at this point, he got more bodies than Jack the Ripper and Summer Rae combined. For some of you who might not know or need a refresher, after leaving the Northern Water Temple, Aang and the gang travel to an Earth Kingdom military base to receive an escort to Omashu so Aang can learn earthbending from Bumi. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. The general, this guy with the crusty beard, the dictator head ass, reveals a pretty clever plan in my opinion, suggesting that Aang should just lock in with the Avatar state to defeat the Father Lord immediately because bear people are dying while he's out here simping for Katara. So the bearded lady here tells him about his plans. Look at how scared my boy is though, and you might be thinking it's because he doesn't feel ready, but come on, we all know about a certain watery wet puss he's trying to get his hands on. But James Harden here decides to help him get into the Avatar state because we all know my boy is capping about not being able to get into the Avatar state. But at the end end of the day, he's still a monk. He's got morals. He knows that the world needs him. The world before hoes, am I right? Why would I choose cosmic energy over Katara? We'll pretend not to hear that until a future video. Anyway, he decides to go with Abraham Lincoln's plan because niggas are getting shocked out there. But after some chai tea, Halloween trickery, and African voodoo ceremony like the one we used to have in my village, only one thing works, and that's throwing hands. And this is the decision that doubles. Nah, triple times is already growing body count. So, my boy pulls up bitching about we'll never trigger it on purpose. Jason Momoa out here says sounds like a challenge to me, so he attacks. But Aang has a doctorate and two PhDs in weaving, so none of them are hanging with him. Weave. 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 Meanwhile, on the other side of the earth, Azula is plotting to get Zuko and Iroh captured. Just doing Azula shit. I love this shorty though. Y'all know about that Azula ding? It's tea time. Yes! I did. That's the Azula ding, so cold. Unlike some certain Azula we are not gonna talk about. Anyway, her devious plans get sold by her captain, but peep this fight though. It's crazy how suspicious Iroh was the whole time in this scene though. The side eye is criminal, so as soon as he hears this, You heard the princess! Raise the anchors! We're taking the prisoners home! He's playing bully ball with them, acting like Prime Shaq out there. Peep this, even if this man right here reversed time, he still wouldn't see this backslap coming. Then he goes into a kick and a booty stomp. This is the equivalent of getting dunked on and they do the rock the baby on you. So smooth but outrageously disrespectful. I promise you these guys' confidence level is at an all-time low right now because they know who they're fighting with. Look at this guy just throwing himself at Iroh, acting like the shorties in those fake gold digger videos. He didn't even throw a punch or nothing, he was just trying to get hit. He probably just wanted something to tell his homies when he got back home. And of course, Zuko is out here selling the bag to Azula. All rage and no bag, Kyrie would be disappointed. So Iroh had to step in for the putback dunk and yank that bitch off the fucking map. But back with Aang, my guy is still dodging and running, but then his kryptonite shows up. And here's when Charles Darwin here decides to drop evolution and change up his game plan and attack Katara. Katara attacks with this long but zero girth attack. Block. Say hi to your mother. Aang realizes he's finna lose that box if he doesn't lock in right now. He attacks. Blocked. But Aang still got that Goku dog in him, so as soon as Katara is totally sunk, he ultra instinct jutsu locks in. But it was at this moment, this man knew, he fucked up. Air splice. Booming my guy straight to the barbershop. Then I don't know who Aang thinks he is, but look at how he trying to imitate imitate Jesus of Nazareth, but unlike Jesus, he comes crashing down and the aftermath is catastrophic. The aftershocks totally eradicate everything on the ground level of this camp and now welcome to why you clicked on this video because right now we'll be calculating how many people exactly he murdered and injured trying to save himself some watery wet Katara. Serious calculations starting now. So coming into the military base, we get this wide shot of the place. We can count about 30 sleep chambers around this main center frame, where the important people live, I presume. Calculating how big these sleep chambers are will tell us how many people my man bodied in his short time being here. Looking at this scene, we get a look at Appa near the sleep chambers, and while accounting for altitude, we can figure out the size of the chambers, which in turn will tell us how many people can sleep in these chambers and therefore how many people my boy stumped. To calculate the altitude, we'll use this scene as we get to see that Appa and this roof are about the same size, with the roof coming in at about 1.8x wider if we account for sketch inaccuracies. We know Appa to be about 16 feet in length, meaning this roof cavern is about 28 to 30 feet long. Now we gotta calculate the distance in order to determine the size of the sleep chambers. And to calculate the distance in this scene, we'll use this formula. And after using our sweet calculators, we get a distance of 44 feet. Using this beautiful size calculator I found online, we can calculate the size of these sleep chambers to be about 
about 214 feet, give or take, meaning it can fit about 4 to 8 people with bunk beds. Meaning, after we multiply this number by 30, we get a whopping 120 to 240 people stomped, at least half dead and a quarter severely injured after the impact. If this was the Netflix live action version, we would get to see them fold like this shorty with heels right here. And I'm sorry to say this, but Katara's magic water isn't enough to save them all. Rest in peace. At a closer inspection here, these sleep chambers might actually hold in more people, but we'll give him a pass for today. Not bad, not bad.